Okay, number one is a two-parter. Um, Connie takes at least 47 seconds uh, S to recite a poem, right? So that would be S is greater than or equal to 47, right? The least that S could be is 47. Right, so if this is, let's say this is zero, then let's say we graph by five, so like five, 10, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that would be 45. So 47 would be like right there. Right, so 47 or greater. All right, part two would be, let's write an inequality illustrated by the graph below. Okay, well that would be uh, all of the values, uh, numbers that are less than, or because this is filled in equal to one. So x is less than or equal to one does the trick. All right, so Zoe makes $10 an hour working at a place. She wants to buy a camera, costs $390. Uh, let's write and solve an inequality that describes at least how long Zoe will have to work. So she could work a certain number of hours. If she works more, she'll have more than she needs, right? So if you work at $10 an hour and you work for five hours, then you would do 10 times five, and that's how much money you make. Uh, but the amount of money you make needs to be uh, greater than or equal to $390, right? So 10 times, so this is just an example, 10 times any number of hours needs to be greater than, however many the number of hours is, it needs to be greater than $390. If we divide both sides by 10, we get x is greater than or equal to 39, and that's what we put right there. Uh, graph and solve. Okay, so we got to get p by itself on one side, so we'll subtract 11 from both sides. We get negative 8p is greater than negative 16. We'll divide both sides by negative 8. P, well now that we divided both sides by negative, we need to take this guy and switch it around right, like that. Um, what is that going to be? 2. Right? So P is less than 2. So let's say that's 0. Here is 2 then. Uh, it needs to be less than 2, not equal to 2. So we'll leave it open the circle. All those points. So P is less than 2. That's what we put right there. All right, to start here, you got three times a parentheses to uh, deal with that, to simplify that, um, to honor that. We would use a distributive property, 3x plus 9. Careful, make sure you distribute to the 3, get 9. 5x minus 4. Okay, well, I have the x's on, on either side, so I'll subtract 3x from both sides. We get 2x minus 4 is less than or equal to 9. We'll add 4 to both sides. 2x is less than or equal to 13. We'll divide by 2 on both sides. x is less than or equal to 13 over 2, which is 6 and a half. I know how much you guys like decimals. There you go. I'm all fine with that decimal because it's exactly right. 6.5 is exactly the same as 13 over 2. So that's fine. Here's a, that's 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a half. It needs to be less than or equal to 6 and a half. 13 halves, that's what that is. Uh, it could be equal to it, so we fill in the circle, or it needs to be less than. So we will indicate all the points to the left of that. Okay, remember this is two inequalities. It's this inequality, and at the same time, it's this inequality. Remember that if we were to solve these independently, we would do the same thing on both sides, same thing on both sides. Well, if we write it like this, with the, the variable expression in the middle, it's just sandwich in between, then we need to still try, treat it like it's two inequalities. If it was just this inequality, we'd add 15 to both sides. We would add 15 to both sides in this case. So we need to do that. Add to both sides of this inequality, add to both sides of this inequality. We get 9 is less than or equal to 3x is less than or equal to 27. Then we'll divide by 3. Divide everything by 3. So we get 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9. All right, so x needs to be bigger than or equal to 3, but it also needs to be less than or equal to 9. So this is 0. Here's 3. Here is 9. And it can be 
equal to 3, it could be equal to 9, it could be greater than 3 while also being less than 9. So not over here, not over there, but somewhere in between or at 3 or 9 is fine too. Okay, remember, I'm going to take the absolute value of some number that I don't know. I'm going to take the absolute value and get 3. What could I take the absolute value of? I could take the absolute value of 3 and get 3. I could take the absolute value of negative 3 and get 3. So this could wind up being 3. This whole thing could wind up being 3. Or it could wind up being negative 3. In this case, x plus 6 is equal to 3. right? In this case, x plus 6 is equal to negative 3. In both cases, we have the inside of the absolute value equals 3. Right? The inside of the absolute value equals the inside of the absolute value. Subtract x, or sorry, 6 on both sides, so you get negative uh, 3, so that's one possibility. Or we subtract 3 from both sides here, we'll get x equals negative 9, so x equals negative 9 is also a possibility, either one. Here, this does not look like that. It, it sure was a piece of cake when we had the absolute value equals 3, because we knew then what the insides could be, the insides of the absolute value. So we'll just subtract 4 from both sides, and that will make that possible. We know that the absolute value of some number, some mystery number, needs to be less than 2. Okay. So what kind of stuff could this be? Well, I could take the absolute value of, uh, of 2. That would be almost right. All the absolute value of 2 would be 2, which is, uh, is less than 2. So I would just need like this inside here, like whatever it is to be not two, but uh, less than two, right? It needs to be less than two. So then what we could say is that negative three x minus seven needs to be less than two. Let's think about this. I don't want to go too far. What if I took the absolute value of negative three? Right? That wouldn't work because the absolute value of negative 3 would be 3, and that would not be less than 2. Right? But what about the absolute value of negative 1 or negative 1 1.5 or negative 1.99999? Right? We just need to stay greater than. This needs to be greater than uh, negative 2. Right? It needs to be greater than negative 2. So negative 3x minus 7 also needs to be greater than negative 2. So we set those both up and we solve negative 3x is less than, add 7 to both sides, we get 9. Divide by negative 3, switch the inequality sign, and we'll get x is greater than negative 3. That's one possibility. Negative 3x is greater than 5. Divide by negative 3, switch the inequality sign, uh, negative 5 thirds. x is less than negative 5 thirds. Right, those are the two possibilities page. Is this a solution to this? If it is, then when we plug in that x and y, this inequality will be true. Let's test it out. Negative, so 5 times negative 3 uh, minus 4 times 7. That's negative 15 minus 28. That's negative 30, 40, negative 30, uh, 43. Is negative 43 less than negative 20? Yes, it is. So yes, it is a solution because it makes this inequality true. It makes this side less than negative 20. Okay, I'm going to graph this. Um, remember that uh, y equals 4x plus 4, that is OK, right? But that's kind of the, like the barrier between the points that work and the points that don't. So we'll graph this. This is just a line. 4 is the y-intercept, right? 4 is the y-intercept. 4 over 1, that's the slope. Up 4 over 1. Uh, it's OK for it to be equal to. So it, any this, this line here is, a, is a, as we said before, made of an infinite number of points. Every point on this line does something very specific. It, if you take the x and y and plug it in for x and y, it makes both sides equal to each other, which is good, because the equals to. That's allowed. OK, what about other points? Uh, what about this point? In fact, let's, let's choose this point. This point right here, 0, 0. Will that make this inequality true? Let's see, 0 for y, less than or equal to 4 times 0 for x, plus 4. That gives us 0, so 0. Is that less than or equal to 4? Yeah, it's less than 4, right? 
So this point works. I bet you this point will work too. And this one, try them out yourself. These ones will work. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, all of these will work. And this will work, I'm sure. Test out all these points, right? And then we'll, as we keep trying out these points, we'll find that when we get right on the point, both sides of this will be equal. And then when we move above the line, we'll find that the y side is greater, OK? And I've explained this uh, quite a few times. Um, if I want the y side to be less than this side, then, well, all the points on the line make both sides equal. So if I want to find points where the y is less than that, then I would need to choose points that are lower, right? Because our y values that are lower are down below. So again, this point here, just for instance, if I plug in that x and y, it will make both sides equal. If I plug in this point, this x and y from this point, it'll make the y side less, right? All the points from below the line will make the y side less. How do we graph this guy? Let's fix that. First, let's write it in slope-intercept form. So we'll subtract 2x from both sides. It's greater than negative 2x minus 14. Uh, divide by negative 7, switch the inequality sign. We get 2 sevenths x plus 2. So we got a y-intercept of 2 that we're going to graph. We got a slope of 2 sevenths. One, up one, or sorry, up two over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna graph a dotted line. Let me explain why. That is not a good line. It's not very line-like. It's closer. Okay, so it's a dotted line. Why is that? Because if I choose a point from on the line, say this one, which is at uh, seven, four, seven, four, what will that do? If I plug in 7, 4, 2 times 7 minus 7 times 4, uh, well, let's see what we get here, uh, 14 minus, uh, let's see, minus see, minus 28. That's negative 14. Is that greater than negative 14? It is not. It's not greater than negative 14. It's equal, but this doesn't say equal. It says strictly greater than. Um, and as, as we discussed before on this line, on every line I've ever graphed uh, with you as a class, uh, I have made the point that any point on the line will make both sides equal. That's what the graph is. It is, it is a, that line is a graph of all the points that when you take that point, that x and y, and you plug it in, it makes both sides equal. But we don't want both sides to be equal. We want this side to be greater. Or equivalently, we want, we want this to be true. That's so why I like to write it like this, because now I can see that the y needs to be less than what I get when I plug in x. Well, what do I get when I plug in any given x? If I plug in this x, I'll get out this y. If I plug in this x, I'll get out this y. If I plug in this x, I'll get out this y. All right. But I don't want to get those y's, because that would make both sides equal. Right? If I plug in a given x, then it gives me a particular y. That would be both sides are equal. I want the y's that are less. So for this point, I want a, a y that is less. right? The y's that are less are down, 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 down. So those are the points that work. Those are the points that make the y side less than the side with x. I'm going to solve this linear system by graphing. We have one graph, two graphs. So we have to graph two graphs. Uh, I guess we could do this one in red. So y-intercept of 2, slope of 2 thirds, up 2 over 3. And we draw this line straight as we can. This one, let's go back to purple here, has a y-intercept of negative 3. It has a slope of negative 1. So we'll go up 1 into the left one, or down 1 into the right one, either way. And we'll try and graph this as straight as possible. OK, the, okay, any point from this line will make both sides of this red one equal. Any point from this purple line will make both sides of the purple one equal. This point is on the red line, and it's part of the, the purple line. So it will work in the red equation and the purple equation. So it works in both equations. And that's what we call the solution to the system of equations. Okay, um, Any guess you gave to where that intersection is, if it was anywhere close, you got credit for it, right? It 
It's at negative 3, 0. That is actually the point where they intersect. You can test it by plugging negative 3 in for x and 0 for y. Negative 3 in for x and 0 for y. And it does work. Solve by substitution. Substitution, it's all set up perfectly for substitution. means, well, y is equivalent to 3x minus 14. So why don't I just take 3x minus 14 and substitute it for y? So I have 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 14 equals 4, no, it's not 14, 4 equals 4. Uh, so we'll distribute the 4 plus 12x minus uh, 96 equals 4. So 15x, combining like terms, we'll add 96 to both sides. We'll add 96, uh, equals, let's see, what did I do here? 4 times negative 14, not 96, I don't know what I was thinking, uh, 56. 56, so I'll add 56 to both sides, 56, which will give us 60. Let me divide by 15 on both sides, we get x is 4, x is 4. That's half the solution. I can take this and now substitute it wherever I want, there or there, which I will choose here. y equals 3 times 4 minus 14 y equals 12 minus 4, that's negative 2. So y equals negative 2. And if you're saying, well, can't I solve this in another way? Can't I use elimination? Can't I subtract, subtract 3x from both sides and do it that way? Yes, you can solve it, but I did ask you to use substitution. The only one where I specified the method by which you solve the, the, uh, the system of equations, everything else was, was up to you. Well, I, I guess opposed, the other one where I specified was the graphing. I wanted you to graph. But graphing substitution, I just wanted to show you, I wanted you to show me that you could do at least one of each. And then however you wanted to solve the other ones was up to you. Okay, this one, it breaks down like the steps that we would take uh, to solve a system of equations. So she's packaging a blend of mixed nuts and wedding, or uh, candy for wedding, favors the mixed nuts cost. So she's like, she's at the store. She is going to mix uh, these, these, uh, these mixed nuts with these candies, uh, put them in just a you know a big bag together, and she has she takes the whole mix up there, and she spends twenty seven dollars all together. How will we write this equation? Well, if we take the the cost per pound per pound of candies, times the poundage right the number of pounds of candy, and we add to that four dollars per pound times the number of pounds of uh, uh, oh, I guess that first one was of uh, mixed nuts, and this is of candy, comes out to be 27, $27. Three dollars per pound times x pounds plus four dollars per pound times y pounds needs to add up to $27. Okay, write an equation showing that Susanna bought eight pounds of nuts and candies. Okay, so she bought x pounds of mixed nuts plus y pounds of candy, and that comes out to eight pounds altogether. So how do we solve this system? Well, let's just rewrite them with the variables all lined up and the other side of the equations all lined up nicely. I'm going to use elimination. I will multiply this by negative 3. So they give me 3x plus 4y equals 27. And multiply by negative 3 gives me negative 3x minus 3y. And be careful here. People were forgetting to multiply the other side of the equation by negative 3 as well. So just be careful there. Now we add it together. These cancel each other out. 4y minus 3y is y, and y equals 3. Okay, so y equals 3, but that doesn't mean anything, right? y equals 3. What's y? y is the number of pounds of candy. So 3 pounds of candy. Right. How many pounds of, uh, of, of mixed nuts? Well, that's easy, because they should add up to 8. So uh, 5 pounds of mixed nuts. Okay, uh, now we're going to use elimination to solve this linear system. How about, uh, ooh, this would be pretty simple. If I multiply this by 2, this will be a 4y, and I'll add the equations together, and then it'll cancel out the y. So 3x minus 4y equals 21. Multiply by 2, we get 8x plus 4y equals, multiply both sides, right, 12. Add it together, we get um, 
11x cancels out equals 33 and x equals 3 x equals 3. What does y equal? Let's find out. Th let's take this equation 3 times 3 minus 4 times y equals 21. 9 minus 4y equals 21. Subtract 9 on both sides. Negative 4y equals 12. Negative 4y. Divide by negative 4y equals negative 3. y equals negative 3. That's good. 3 comma negative 3. That's good. 3. Yeah. 3 comma negative 3 without parentheses, that would be all right. Um, implying the order x first, y second. Mark with a C, sold. 461 tickets for a school play. Okay. Uh, student tickets cost $3. All right. uh, adult tickets cost $4. Okay. Mark sales totaled $16.24. How many adult tickets and how many student tickets? OK, so the, the, there's the things that we don't know, like uh, how many adult tickets? Let's call that x. Uh, how many student tickets? Let's call that y. The number of adult tickets, the number of uh, student tickets, x and y. Um, I think this is the easiest thing. I know that if I count up all the tickets, they should add up to 461. So x plus y should be 461. Uh, if you're having trouble writing either of these equations, um, take a guess, as I said before. Take a guess. Guess at what x and y could be. I don't know, uh, 100 and... Uh, Obviously, 561, right? Because I have to add up to 461. Is that right? Well, it probably won't be, and, but I will use that guess to write this second equation. But what would I do to test this out? Well, 100, 100 what? Uh, 100 adult tickets and 561 student tickets. Okay, uh, $3. Student tickets cost $3. Adult tickets cost $4. So I take 100 times 4, right? 100 adult tickets at $4 a piece would be $400. So that's only some of this money, right? And I would add on um, 3 times 561. And I know that that needs to come out to be 1,624. Is that correct? Let's find out. Let me get out of here, clear that out of there. OK, I th that first part's easy, 400 plus 3 times 561. 2,083, no, that's too much. Can I adjust these amounts and keep guessing and checking? Yes, yes I can. But now I can use this to write another equation with actual variables in it, right? Use some algebra here. Um, so 4 times the number of adult tickets, right? What's the number of adult tickets? I'm representing that with x. So 4 times the number of adult tickets plus 3 times the number of student tickets equals how much money? $1,624. Right. Now I will solve this. Um, uh, I could use elimination. I get to multiply both of the, uh, you know, multiply both sides of this by negative 4 to cancel out the x's, negative 3 to cancel out the y's. Uh, just to show you there's another alternative, I'm going to just get y equals 461 minus x. Right. Just subtract x from both sides. And then I'm going to take that and replace y with it. 4x plus 3 times 461 minus x equals 1,624. 4x plus 3 times 461. 1,283 minus 3x equals 1,624. 4x minus 3x is x. I'll subtract 1,384 from both sides. So here's what I actually do in my calculator. I take subtract, there I subtract from 1,383, I subtract 1,624. And that's going to be negative, but if I subtract it the other way, it would be positive. So I'll just say that equals positive 241. So x is 241. 241 is x. x is the adult tickets, 241 adult tickets. Um, let's put, plug that right back in there, 461 minus 241. So negative 241, I'll just uh, add to that 461. That'll, that'll be 461 minus 241. And 220. 220, apparently, students. OK, there we go. No problem. Uh, at a garden shop, a customer pays $48 five geraniums for the lease. OK, another person is uh, for the OK, write a system of equations that can find 
the cost x of one geranium and the cost y of one lily. Uh, I don't know how much geranium costs. I don't know how much a lily costs. What if a uh, geranium costs eight dollars? Right, that's how much a geranium costs. And and what if a uh, uh, lily costs four dollars? I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Um, then. Let's see if it adds up to 48. And if it does, let's also make sure that uh, that for four geraniums and six lilies, that adds up to 58, right? And we'll use that guess to help us write the actual system of equations, because we want the system of equations. If eight and four were my were my dollars, right, per geranium, per geranium, per lily, uh, then I would take five times eight plus four times four. No, that would be that would be forty. I don't think this is going to work out. This would be forty. This would be sixteen, and that's going to be fifty-six. And it's supposed to be forty-eight, right? Eight five times eight plus four times four was supposed to be forty-eight, but it wasn't. Okay. But if I just take out my guesses of eight and four and replace them with variables like g and l. G would stand for the cost for the cost of a geranium. L would stand for the cost of a lily. Okay. Then similarly, four times the cost of a geranium plus six times the cost of a lily should add up to fifty-eight. And now I can solve the system using whatever I want. How about uh, cancel the you know elimination? Uh, I'll multiply this by a negative four. I'll multiply this by a five, so that I get negative twenty and twenty, and they'll cancel each other out. So we've got negative 20g minus 16l. Remember, take it to the other side of the equation as well, both sides of the equation. Same thing has to happen to both sides. Uh, 48 times 4. So this should be a negative, right? Negative 192. Let me double check I remember that right. Because negative 4 times 48 should be negative 192. So we get 20g in the second equation plus 30l. You could easily use x and y instead of g and l if you want. 5 times 58, 5 times 58, 290. Now when I add these together, the g's will cancel, which is the whole idea. Make sure we understand that's a positive 30l. 30l minus 16l is um, 17l. No, 14l. I the wrong way. 14l equals 290 minus 192. Ninety-eight divided by fourteen. Fourteen. Ninety-eight divided by fourteen is seven. And by making L my my letter that I use to represent lilies, it reminds me that L is lilies. The cost of a lily is seven dollars. So seven dollars uh, for a lily. And uh, if that's seven dollars, then I could substitute this into wherever, like maybe this one right here. Five g plus four times seven should be forty-eight. And uh, let's see, twenty-eight. Subtract twenty-eight from both sides. Five g equals forty-eight minus twenty-eight is twenty. Uh, and g is four, which means that it's four dollars for a jury. Okay, so you're gonna find the solution to this system of inequalities. I think it's pretty simple to do elimination here. So multiply by two. Uh, I'm just gonna write that down here. Four x plus ten y equals uh, fourteen. Equals fourteen. So I get to add these together and they'll cancel. So I'll get that canceling. But then ten y minus ten y is also canceling. Right? We get zero on this side. On this, I get a 14 plus 2 is 16. Well, that means no solution. All right. Uh, let's see why that is. It's basically, let's say I multiply this by a negative 2 instead of a positive 2. I would get negative 4x minus, minus 10y equals negative 14. OK, so let's look at these two equations. The left sides are identical, the right sides are not. So I'm supposed to believe that there's some x and a y 
that works here and here. That would be a solution to the system. But if I did find an x and a y that worked in here, there's absolutely no way it would ever work in this equation. So I'm supposed to take this x and multiply by negative 4, take this y and multiply by negative 10, add them together and get 2. Here I'm supposed to do the exact same thing with x and y and not come out with 2, but instead come out with negative 14. There's no way that you're going to be able to add two things together, get 2, and then later add the exact same two things together and get negative 14. That's why there's no solution. There's no x and y that works in both equations. It's impossible. No solutions. Okay, that was it. Um, I'm pretty sure, yes. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, absolutely stop by. Let me know. Ask any questions you have. Thanks a lot. Bye.